Hey guys, welcome to this video. I appreciate all the comments that come in. So here's one that we'll answer from Orlando Swain. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It says, do you have any sample or templates for a motion to dismiss? And the context of this is our pretty incredibly long video uh, that is, I think it's like two hours long, where we go through about 150 different questions that are asked about debt collection lawsuits. And so it's a very good question. The short answer is not really, okay? Because I find in the debt collection context, 99% of the time, a motion to dismiss does not do any good. So we just file an answer. But let me give you a couple of places to look or, or some ideas to think about. So this is a form for Alabama, it's just a general answer to the complaint. And this is a PDF. And let me show you where this comes from. So it's eforms.alicourt.gov. And uh, typically most states will have something like this where you go to the, what's usually called the administrative office of courts. And then there'll be forms or there'll be like, this is called do-it-yourself forms. See up here, might be civil forms. And for some reason, the answer is not under civil forms. It's only under the uh, do-it-yourself form. So I guess this is more for lawyers, I, I guess is the idea here. So anyway, come down to answer to complaint. And again, I think a lot of states will have this, just a fillable PDF. And you, know, you type in the case number. That's so the court knows which case you're talking about. And then is this in circuit court, district court, small claims court, a blank county? So again, we've got to know where your document that you're filing which case that goes in. Well, we got to know which county it goes into and then which type of court, circuit, district, or small claims. Put the name of the plaintiff, name of the defendant. And then you give some options here. You're given some options. I do not owe the plaintiff any money. Uh, there'll be a trial if I check this. And I, I will point out that if you get the small claims form answer uh, in Alabama, these boxes are in different order, totally different. So... In that form, it's box D that you check. But here, it's box A. Do not owe the plaintiff any money. Uh, B is, I owe the plaintiff some money, but not the full amount. C is, I want you to enter a judgment against me. And then um, D is, I want to countersue. Well, here's part says, I asked the court to dismiss this case. And the two options it gives would be statute of limitation and you weren't served. Then you sign it. And you fill out saying, I sent this to the other side. So that would be one option. See if there's some sort of official form. Uh, but it, here's the other. And I, I just wanted to have a blank document just to show you there's nothing magical about this. Okay. So we would put the court up top and get my uh, keyboard here to work. So you know, it might be the small claims court of Jefferson County or the circuit court of Madison County, whatever it is. So you put the court and then you would put who the plaintiff is and then who the defendant is. Again, this lets the court know, okay, it's in the small claims court of Jefferson County. It's Midland funding suing against Joe Blow. Okay. And then you'd put the case number and that's going to be something in Alabama. Typically, it would look something like this 2019 SM, that would be small claims, and then 901234. Okay. The nine in Alabama just means it's electronically filed, which 99% of cases are electronically filed. But the point is, this lets the, the clerk that keeps up with all the cases know exactly what case number. So, if we know we're in the right county, in the right type of court, and we've got this down, now we've got the case number. And the reason this is important, some people say, well, I shouldn't have to put the case number. You know, they know who I am. Well, I've had clients that Midland Funding has filed three lawsuits against them. So, you yeah, know, imagine that was me in Jefferson County, Alabama, there'd be Midland Funding versus John Watts, Midland Funding versus John Watts, Midland Funding versus John Watts. So you got to have the case number. So we know specifically what the case is. And then you could put something like motion to dismiss. Okay. And then you explain why. You say, you know, this 
lawsuit was filed against me on whatever date and uh, you know maybe it's statute of limitations so you'd say statute of limitations is six years or three years or four years and you you give the citation to the law and then say here's why that was violated so let's imagine that the lawsuit was filed in 2000 i'm sorry 2019 statute of limitation is six years and then say uh, the loan was breached in 2012. Well, okay, 2012, they should have sued me by 2018. So this is why I'm asking that the case be dismissed. So there's nothing magical about a motion. You just you want to make it very clear, very easy to understand what case this goes in and who you are. Okay, so... It, what we would typically do here is say defendant's motion to dismiss. Okay, so I don't think I spelled that right. So defendant's motion to dismiss. And so the court knows, okay, this is the defendant. What are they asking me to do? Dismiss the case. Well, you got to give me some basis for that. Here's when the lawsuit was filed. Here's what statute of limitation is. You know, according to section blah, blah, blah. Okay. And that would be the code section. And then the loan or the debt was breached, you know, on this date. And so therefore it's untimely and you should dismiss the case. Okay. And typically what you do in a motion is you would sign it and date it and then have what's called the certificate of service. And all that says is on this date, so I'm recording this on January 16, 2020. On January 16, 2020, I mailed a copy of this motion to the collection lawyer and I properly addressed it and put stamps, you know, proper postage on it. And, and I promised that I did this. Okay, well, now you're good. And so uh, that's really all a motion is. And so I don't have a sort of a sample or a template because, uh, I mean, maybe once every 10 years I file a motion to dismiss. And part of that is you have to understand the perspective we're coming from in these cases. We are, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here, but for example, if somebody's not been served, we will still file an answer for them. And we don't raise an issue about service. Because I'm not trying to delay the trial. I'm trying to get to trial as quickly as possible. Okay? So that's the difference in the way that we handle this and the vast majority of people handle this. And it doesn't mean we're right. doesn't mean we're wrong. It's just this is how I've done it for many, many years. And whether we have any skill or whether we've just been very lucky, we've had incredible success with this. So, you know, I'm going to keep doing it. Is We want to get to trial. Because we get to trial, I believe that we will win our case. If we win our case, that has wonderful implications. <laughs> okay, It's going to help us with our credit report. We may be able to sue the debt collector, sue them for violating the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, maybe sue them for malicious prosecution, a state law claim that has punitive damages. And so I'm not trying to delay things. And if I know that 99.9% .9 uh, the judges will look at a motion to dismiss in a small claims district court case, which is where almost all these cases are filed, that they'll look at that and say, no, nah, let's just have a trial. Because here's sort of what happens. You file a motion to dismiss, they'll set it for a hearing in two, three, four, five weeks. You show up, you spend a couple hours there waiting around, you get to the motion, and the judge says, y you know, we could have already tried this case. I'm going to deny this and let's come back in a month and try it. So again, for some people, they like that. They, they want to delay it. They want to push it off. They think there's a strategic advantage. Hey, that's fine. You know, if, if you're a lawyer watching this, you do it the way you want to. If you're doing this on your own, you do it the way you want to. I'm just saying how we do it, which is we want to get to trial. We do not want the trial pushed back. And so you know, I, I'm not going to file a motion to dismiss that I think is not going to be granted when I can just file an answer 
And sometimes we even file a motion. We say, Judge, we want your first available trial date because we want to go to trial. We don't want to delay it. So anyway, hope that that's helpful to you. And if you have any more questions about that, let me know and keep the comments coming and I'll answer them as I can. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.